Hello YouTube, my name is Nishal and today I'm going to be doing my uh, guide to A-level maths. Um, so just to give you a background before I start, uh, I'm 17 doing maths and further maths at A-levels and uh, I've done my C1 and C2 exams and uh, I decided to, I've, I've, after looking at them and finding the hardest aspects of them, that I want to give some tutorials on some of the hardest parts of maths. Um, and one of them that I asked my friends uh, was binomial expansion. So Today I'm going to be giving you a quick guide to binary expansion. Uh, this video is mainly meant to help you understand the concept of it and uh, how to answer questions on it rather than understanding every, everything about uh, binary expansion. So by the end of this you should be able to answer the, 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 at least the medium and if not some of the harder questions of, related to binary expansion. So let's get into it. Uh, before I start again, I'd just like to say this is the calculator I'm going to be using. Um, I am aware that people use different calculators. Uh, everywhere but this one I'm going to use is quite a common one um, and if you can work I can't give you an example for every single calculator but hopefully I'll tell you which buttons you need to use and you can find the equivalent on your own calculator so what is binomial expansion so uh, at GCSE maths or at lower maths you would have come across questions such as this like x plus one x plus one and they will tell you to expand that now to expand that you just have x squared plus x plus x plus 1 equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now obviously this is not too difficult to expand, let me just move this slightly this way. That is not too difficult to expand, you just that times that, <coughs> pardon me, I have a bit of a sore throat, um, that times that, that times that, and that times that. And obviously that gives you all these figures here. Um, however, Binary expansion it works on the fact that you're not going to have just two brackets. This is the same as x plus 1 squared, obviously, but you're not going to have two brackets. You're going to have five or six. So you could get something like uh, 4 minus x to the power of 4, let's say. Now, with this one, th this is the kind of question you could get an exam, and they told you to expand that. And expanding that literally by doing this, writing 4 minus x, uh, 4 minus x, 4 minus x, 4 minus x will take a very long time and um, you don't really have that much time in the exam to go that times that times that times that and that times that times that times that and it's would just take you too long in all honesty and um, you need a quick way of doing it so what you need is binary expansion um, and one of the key things you'll need is uh, this, this button on, on the calculator which I just zoom in uh, which one am I going this way there we go, yes, focused. Um, you can see where the divide is, there's a button that says NCR just above it. Now you need to find that on your specific calculator, but on this calculator, if I just turn it on, if you just press shift, then you press the divide button, you'll get this C that comes on the screen, as you can see there. Um, and this is what you'll need in binary expansion. So what that C means, if I write that out, you have uh, four will be the, the numbers that you'll put in front, always put in front of the C. So on the calculator, you always have four for this specific question because that's the number uh, of brackets you have. And so what four C, let's take four C one, for example. What that means is it uses uh, something called factorial. You don't really need to know factorial, but all it means is that four factorial and this exclamation mark is uh, the sign of factorial. Uh, it means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you have 4 factorial over 4 minus 1 brackets factorial uh, times 1 factorial. So, uh, 1 factorial, there we go. So, <clears throat> you have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 4 minus 1, which is 3, 3 factorial. So that is 24 over 6 times 1, uh, which is 24 over 6, which is 4. So just to verify, if you don't believe me, um, 4C1 is, there you go, 4. So that's what 4 factorial is, and the only exception to this is 0. Um, for anything, C, when you put is it for anything, something, uh, how am I saying this? Yeah, 4C0 is always going to be 1. So whatever number you put before the C, and if, as long as you put a 0 after, it will always be 1. That's just something that you need to know. Um, but obviously, like I said, You'll be allowed a calculator in C2, so you don't really need to know how this works. Um, this is just for if you really want to know. But just remember, you're going to need to use this this C 
uh, function on your calculator. <clears throat> so, to answer these, this kind of question, what you need to do is you start with 4c0. You're going to go from 0 here. This number always is fixed. This number is always the same as uh, this number here. They are always the same number. Just take bear that in mind. So 4c0, that's what you start with. Now that equals, uh, obviously as I said, 1. So you do 1, right 1 here. Then the way I do it is I go 4c1 equals, let's do that on the calculator. Obviously I already told you, but uh, I'll do it again anyway. 4c1 equals 4. So right 4 here. I'll move the page up a bit so you can see. Uh, 4c2 equals let me just ugh my calculator four uh, z two equals six four c three equals now this is something to do uh with you'll see that there's a recurring pattern here and if I do four c my calculator four c four is one so you'll see it goes one four six one four. Um, th that there's a name for that triangle, which uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But you don't again, you don't really need to know that the pattern of that. You just need to know uh, when you do this on the calculator, it will you will get a pattern. Don't be surprised. Whatever you do, you'll get the same number here as you do here. Um, when whether you use four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever number you use on the front, you always end up one here. You always end up with one with the last number. So just bear that in mind. Now. These are the numbers that you're going to need. This is what you're timesing uh, each thing by. So we've gone 4c0 equals 1. Now 1 times 4 to the power of 4. And then you have that times uh, minus x to the power of 0. So th this power and this power always must equal the total power over here, which is 4. They always have to equal that. Just bear that in mind again. Um, so you'll see when it, when I've done all of these, they'll all this add to this will always equal four. And the second one, you have four times four to the power of three times minus x to the one. Obviously, three add one is four. You're timesing. This is going up. You can you could do it the other way around and put zero here and four here, but I recommend doing it this way uh, because this is what exams usually ask uh, of you. So, four, so you have 4, 3, 4 to the power of 2 times minus x squared. Remember, you're squaring the whole thing, yeah? Just again, bear that in mind. You're not just squaring the x, and you're not just, you have to square the coefficient as well. Um, 4 times 4 to the power of 1 times minus x cubed. And finally, 4c4 four four is 4 times 4 to the power of 0 times minus x. To the four. So you can see that one I've gone zero, one, two, three, four, zero, one, two, three, four, and obviously all of these therefore must add up to four. Now, what you want to do on your calculator is um, bear in mind anything to the power of zero, or as you should know, always equals one. So you could do like just to, if you need any proof, ninety-nine to the power of zero is one. Any any number you do to the power of zero is always one. So here you'd have zero times 4 to the power of 4, which I'll do in my calculator, 4 to the power of 4, which is 256. So you have 1 times 256 times 1. So the first number in your expansion will be 256, which if you were going to do it uh, by literally doing everything, every single sum in the, old, the normal way, which you would consider doing it, like this times this times this times this, you would obviously get 4 to the four to the power of 4, which is 256. So you know that this is one of the terms. The second one you get is um, 1. D to anything to the power 1 is the number itself. So you've got minus x times 4 to the power, uh, 4 to the power of 3, which oops, 4 to the power of 3 is 64. So, you have mi so far we have minus 64x, because that times that is minus 64x. Times that by 4, the value we just got, in 256. So then you end up with 4 times 4 cubed, which is 4 to the power of 4, so you get minus 256x, which is just that times that times that. Now, on this one here, you have to remember that you're doing 
uh, x squared and minus 1 squared. Now minus 1 times minus 1 is 1. So you have 4 squared which is 16. So 16 times 6 which is 96. So you have 96 which is this times this um, times 1 which is just 96. So it will be positive 96 x squared. Now again 4 times 4 is 16. So you have 16 here. Um, and m uh, minus 1 because the coefficient here is minus 1 and you're cubing that so minus 1 times minus 1 is 1 times minus 1 again would be minus 1 I know that might be a bit confusing but literally all I've just said is uh, minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1 which is minus 1 so minus 1 cubed is minus 1 and x cubed is obviously x cubed so you're going to end up with minus 1 times 4 which is minus 4 times 4 which is minus 16 so you have minus 16 x cubed finally the last value you're going to need is uh, 1 so 1 times 4 to the power of 0 which is 1 1 times 1 is obviously 1 uh, and mi minus 1 to the power of 4 is minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1 which is 1 um, and 1 and x to the 4 is obviously x to the 4 so you end up with 1 times 1 times 1 which is plus x which is plus 1x to the 4 obviously that's the same as saying minus x times minus x times minus x times minus x that would give you x squared that would give you x squared and you times them together that gives you x to the power of 4 and so this value here these values here are your, are your final answers um, to the question I asked before so in to simplify uh, 4 minus x to the power of 4 equals 256 minus 256x plus 96x squared minus 16x cubed plus 4x. That's just in essence what uh, binomial expansion is. You could uh, get harder questions than that. You could get some simpler questions, but I don't think you'll get uh, many more that in exams anyway that ask much more of you that. There are obviously, you could, as like I said, this is what the C function means, you don't really need to know that. But um, hopefully, using this the same pattern as I said, you work up from here 0 to 4, or 0 to the final value you have here. Uh, just the key things to remember, th this number and this number always have to equal this number. Um, and yeah, other than that, I think binomial expansion is, it, it can be quite difficult at first, but hopefully you should get the hang of it. Um, so that's my first episode today. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and um, any positive feedback would be appreciated and, cr and constructive criticism. <laughs> um, yeah, tell me also in the comments if what what maths problems, what do you call it problems? Maths uh, techniques you'd like me to focus on. I've got a few in mind so any feedback would be appreciated. Uh, thank you very much and yeah, cheers.